Hi everybody, I am uh, going to quick show you how to replace the end uh, of an extension cord properly. So we got a bu bucket of uh, extension cords here and these are the tools uh, you're going to need. Um, first up is this tester. Now this, these guys are, you get a buck, if you don't have one already, just a couple of bucks um, from the, uh, you know, Menards or wherever. Um, the nice thing about these is these plug in and they give you lights that light up. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, depending on the pattern that's there, corresponds to this little diagram here. And you can see, um, so if the two yellows light up, but the red one doesn't, got them on both sides, there we go. So right there, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see, if I, let's see if we can, there we go. Yeah, see how those two are yellow? You have white, you have yellow, and you have red on your diagram. So the, if it's white, that means the light isn't lit up. And if it's, you know, the red one's obviously red, the yellow's obviously the yellow. Um, so if there's no red and two of the yellows are lit up, then down here, then that's correct. But if you have, look at that, that's a, that's a red, that's a yellow, and that's a white. So if the red and the left yellow is on, but the far right light is off, then your hot and your neutral are reversed. I'll go over that. Um, so anyway, so that's a, that's a good tester. Um, one of the tools you'll need, we'll need that guy. Uh, let's see here, so we got these guys, and your basic dikes, they're, uh, they're wire cutters, heavy duty wire cutters. Um, and this is, these are uh, wire strippers, uh, so you, can, you have crimpers on the bottom here. Um, but up here is where we really worry about because this is, I'll show you, um, wire strippers and then uh, two to the both types of screwdrivers. So you got your Phillips and you got the flathead. If you don't have a uh, tester, but you do have a multimeter, you can use the multimeter too. Uh, won't go into too much detail on that. Uh, pretty much all you have to do is to set it to ohms. Um, and stab the one side and stab the other side with the connectors open and as long as you as long as there's a current on the wire that's supposed to be connected on either side you're good this will make a whole lot more sense after i crack open a wire but that's that so anyway so that's the tools uh the tester uh the dikes the strippers and you got the two uh um heads so we got our We'll move these guys out of the way. Uh, so we have a cable. Um, the vast majority of them um, are nice enough to... Do I see one in the bucket? Yeah. Uh, the vast majority of the cables you'll find are nice enough to tell you what's wrong with them. Uh, it's missing the uh, plug guy there. Uh, but every once in a while you get a plug that doesn't look like it's, uh, um, you know, it's not uh, immediately evident that's broken. So let's uh, plug our tester in and plug this guy in. Now you'll see, in fact, why don't we uh, turn our light off and make that a little obvious. There you go. You see how that's two, two lights, the red one's not on. And so that's, that's actually correctly wired. Um, well, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this side aside. Um, at work, when we have ones that come in, um, they there could be a number of reasons why, but the bucket is not necessarily that it's broken, uh, but that it is, uh, it just needs to get checked out. So I'll do further diagnosis on this, but uh, for that's outside the scope of this, uh, this video, I would say. Uh, but, so that one for our purposes anyway, is good. Let's go to the busted one, because I just happen to know that one's busted. Okay. So this guy, um, same deal. Let's turn our light back on. Um, we have a busted prong. In fact, I will plug her in way over here. And uh, I, I like to complete the circuit before I energize it, but that's just me. There we go. So that guy's plugged in. We will plug this guy in. And look at that. We have there uh one light so the middle light is lit 
red's not, left side's not. And I look at the chart, and the chart says, do, 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 do. yeah, open ground, uh, nothing, yellow, nothing. That's what that thing says. And so the says that's an open ground, and sure enough, pull that off. That's about as open as you get. So, unplug that. So, we need a new one. So, what do we? How do we do this? Let's see here. I will. Obviously, whoever wrapped this one up didn't take Todd's course on how to wrap up the cable, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, uh, first things first is we get a, our new plug. That's kind of nice right there. And we grab our, our dikes, chop that off. This piece is useless, so we're gonna pitch it. I take this off, because this is not a mattress. I can remove that labeling. So we, you know, I just clean this off a bit. And then, uh, oh, the uh, one tool that I always have, I always forget to set out, because it's in my pocket, is uh, my handy dandy knife. Now you can use a, a uh, pair of, um, you know, like a box cutters or some kind of a razor blade, but pretty much all, all you gotta do is to cut just a hair into the sheath and then I just see, I just kind of like encourage it to the sheath to continue on with the break I just made. There we go. It's almost like perforation. There we go. And then it just comes off nice. In fact, if I try not to slice my hand open on video, that would be... Although, it's, I, I, I think ER doctors, personally, would appreciate this thing of kids videotaping themselves doing stupid things. Because then you don't even have to ask the patient what went wrong. You just say, hey, can I see the video? And then that... I'm going to grab these. These aren't really made for doing just this, but whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, I would think a ER doctor would appreciate. So you got this this guy, which is pretty much just a, sh a, a sleeve for the, you know, protection for the... And there, there's these grooves. I don't know if that's coming in. Yeah, you can see that. Little grooves that the wires just kind of slide right into. But that's all that is right there. So when you, when you slice in order to strip this off, you just want to slice the parts where it's uh, thick and you just go to a certain depth and keep going around. Um, that's something you, sh you just practice. Practice makes perfect and that's all you got. Um, after I do that, so this can, that part can get pitched. After I do that, I, I just take a quick check, just to double check, make sure I didn't uh, slice into my wires at all. And it doesn't look like I did. Um, and so that's good. All right, so that's set up. Put this here. At this point, I'm going to take this guy off. Now, one thing to keep in mind that I typically do um, is uh, so this guy just comes apart. I I actually set physically set this down while I'm going because that reminds me to take this and put this on just like that. Come on, man. Sweet. There we go. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So this guy is on. I don't know why I'm gonna go. Loosen her up even more. I never know how far I'm gonna go before this thing just falls off. The problem is, is these, so it, these things you buy from uh, you know, Menards or Home Depot or wherever, and, uh, you know, they're a couple of bucks, but the housing is plastic and the screws are metal, so if you yank on them too much or if you get a little too excited or if you're, if you, you know, do just too much, then that increases your odds of, uh, you know, stripping the plastic on the inside, and that's, that's kind of a buzzkill, I'll tell you that. All right. Now, you can't just wire this any old way because that's a, that's a great way to start a fire or, uh, I don't know, something, kill a small child, whatever happens when you wire stuff wrong. But um, the 
You'll notice, let me first uh, point out that this thing has a green wire, a black wire, and a yellow wire right there. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and interestingly enough, you'll notice on this guy, you, you have three different screws. You have a, like this green tinted screw, you have a silver screw, and you have a brass screw. Or, as I like to think, the green screw, and then a light screw, and a dark screw. And that's it, right? And so, I always connect green wire to green wire. That's pretty universal. And then, the other two, you just do the black screw to the dark, or black wire to the, to the uh, dark screw, and the white wire to the light screw. And then, that's it. That's pretty much how I remember it. Um, so, it's, I'll just kind of go through my process. I take about yay much. I do this often. For the majority, of the, like if, if you don't do this very often, you're just like, or if this is a new one, the overwhelming majority of these types of uh, um, connectors actually have hidden somewhere in here a way for you to just gauge. And in this case, it's like you got this hole right here. Um, so if you do it right, should, you should be able to bottom out and see, look at that, I just, that was perfect. So you, you essentially, before you cut the wire, um, take the wire and either bottom it out in there, um, but in this case, I'm using a thicker gauge. Um, so you bottom them out there, stick your thumbnail there, and there you go, that's where you're supposed to, that's where you're supposed to cut. So do that, pull that off, we're good to go. Same thing, white wire, just bottom that guy out. Look at that. Um, just make sure I'm getting the light. There we go. So white wire, just bottom it out. It won't fit in that hole. Otherwise, I would go to that hole and stick my thumbnail where it, where it meets. There it is. And then come back to this. Take the strippers. Do that. And it's good. Now, the question comes is like, what, what hole do you use for this guy? Because um, there's like... I don't know, 700 different holes. Let's see if I can't. There we go. Yeah, look at that. But you can see how it's on the other side. Not really. That's a good shot. Look at that. I'm almost a professional. I'm a student. Leave me alone. So anyway, um, essentially what, like, I just happen to know it's not this hole. It's the next hole up just because I do this so much. I, it's just second nature, right? But if you don't know, I would say just start with the bottom hole. You know strip it if it's too big you'll leave some of the sheath behind right um so then if so if that doesn't work you move up to the next hole and you do that and then the next hole and keep doing that until until you pull out and ideally what you want is just if you if you look in there there shouldn't be any of these metal bits on the inside if there are you're stripping it with a too small of a gauge but if you're not then that's that so we got that going um, these guys like I said I do uh, um, I do green first uh, these so you have this uh, let's see here let's, let's, uh, let's try the macro of my lens there we go um, so this bottom plate right here is uh, hardwired straight to this guy right so the wire should fit between these two and the, the wire, because it connects this guy, the, the electricity goes through the wire, touches this plate, goes through the plate, off to the other side, and there you go. And that's how that guy works. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move the barrel, there we go. Um, so you have the plate and then you have this free floating sort of a guy right here. In fact, if I jiggle him around, see how he's spaced out a little bit there and then you rotate it let gravity do its thing as it closes down and the job of the screw is to pinch those two together so you you create this tight you know connection right there there we go moving the light a little bit so i want to take my green wire and what i do is i stick it just slightly off to the side of that screw because essentially what ends up happening is, so you have a screw, and, it's, and in order to tighten it, you're going to go this way. And so what ends up happening is if you're, is if you're 
um, I'll go back to my pointer, here we go. Um, if your wires are on this side of the screw and the screw bites, because that side of the screw is a screw that pushes towards the opening, if, if the screw bites onto the wires, it's just gonna try to push your wires out. But if you go on this side of the screw or the right side of the screw looking over it, and it's, you're doing this in order to tighten it, if it bites your wires, it's gonna bite and pull it in, which is pretty much what you want. So that's how I do that. And that's down. So green goes to green. At this point, I can flip her back over and then tighten her down. You don't want to he-man the thing, but at the same time, oh, 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 I wasn't paying attention and the wires came out a little bit. So we're going to, I'm going to actually do my job for a second and do it. So yeah, so there we go. Wires are in thing is clamped down that's pretty good uh, some guys spread their wires out and then clamp them but I don't um, I'm too good for that or something I don't know so yeah same thing so you have the silver screw that's very silver you have the darker brass screw um, dark uh, dark screw gets the dark wire light screw gets the light wire stick that on the side on the right hand side of the screw so you don't Twisting it in, twist it a little bit, and I'm gonna lean against the, my, push my body against the cable on the bench just so I'm, give myself a little bit of, whatever, so there we go. All right, tight, tight, tight. It is hard to play host and do my job at the same time. And hand tights uh, pretty good. And last but not least, thinking about the way the thing goes in. There we go. So I'm on the other end, so I can tighten this guy in. So, yeah, that was done right. All right. There we go. So, all right. Um, there we go. Light, light wire, light screw, dark wire, dark screw, green wire to green screw. And then that's that for that part. Um, and then let me clean this off a little bit because that's, then I took the sticker off. This was left some of the, I'll have to goog on this or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so this, that's a basic wiring. And then it's just a matter of you look in there and you see the holes where the screw is supposed to go. See the three holes. And then you see the see the three screws coming in through there, um, and that's pretty much it. What I like to do, so if you if you think about this, like how it normally plugs in, plugs in, you know, like that, where this is the top, this is the bottom, or vice versa, this is the top, and this is the bottom. And I just like to keep this end right here, um, you know, parallel to the floor. So. I'll orient my thing in such a way where it's vertical um, the way I would think and then I just take a quick peek in the in that guy and then just line up the screws so that it's it's functional there we go so that's that and I quick do this do that that so these are just basic tight there we go tighten her down okay so that's good and tight and then I just quick tighten her down now after I'm done doing this I am obviously you want to test it before actually uh, so this oh yeah so anyway so that this, this back portion um, if you have a cable that has a back portion, this is more or less your strain relief so that if somebody tugs on this side or tugs on the inside or whatever, wherever they're tugging the wire, it doesn't, it tugs the whole wire as opposed to just like one of the strands within the wire. Um, and so, 
Yeah, so if you don't, I can quick show you an underwriter's uh, knot. In fact, I'll, I'll do that on the other side. But before we do that, let's, uh, let's test this guy, see how she works. So, grab the cable. And so this guy gets plugged in. This other side gets plugged in and look at that. That's, those are lit. Cause for celebration. So she's good. Um, do a quick another one. This is uh, this is just this end of a um, extension cord. It's a smaller guy I just chopped off. So um, uh, second verse, same as the first. Pulled this guy apart, three screws, pulls apart. There you go. Just to speed the things up. So um, now for before we took off like yay amount, not very much in order to because all we needed was just enough to get into there and put the attach the wires. Um, this one's a little trickier, so I just I typically give myself a little more room if I'm going to do it. This is uh, for the strain relief knot or underwrite writer's knot. Um, so typically I, I, three fingers worth is plenty for me um, but I, I would say if you're starting out uh, or if you're doing a demonstration where uh, um, you know the if something bad can happen it will happen that sort of a thing um, just give yourself a little extra room until you get it down to a system so I'm here and I just give it a good little slice Ooh, that's ugly what I get for talking and doing it at the same time. There's that. I will say if you use a knife as opposed to like a strippers or something, that's a, I mean, I, I would focus if I were you, but I'd cut your own finger. I guess I don't, I'm not, I'm not your father. So do whatever you want. Um, let's see here. There we go. Look at that. We're starting to break off. Same thing from before. Um, you just want in, you just want to cut enough to kind of break that outside layer. So you don't want to cut it into the next wires in. Um, and you can, the amount of effort it takes to break through the inner layer is, I don't want to say negligible, but not very much. So you, all you have to do is break that outside layer. And there you go. You got that, that can get tossed and then you have your, wires now um, the point of a strain relief knot I'll put this on while I'm thinking about it actually there we go the po point of a strain relief knot is so that um, if like one of your wires gets pulled or something along those lines that you don't just take you know so all right if you have um, if you're pulling this out at 20 pounds of pressure right then this little wire is going to take all 20 pounds but if you have a strain relief knot, which is designed to intertwine these in such a way where if 20 pounds is on this wire, it's actually on all of the wires. So that distributes it much easier to, you know, six pounds per wire instead of 20, right? Whatever, whatever your weight is on this one, because of the knot ends up being divided equally among the others. And so that's, that's half the point is so you don't get that. Um, I've seen a lot of different ways to do this. Um, basically, if the guy giving you money shows you a different way of doing it, then go ahead and do it his way. But this is the way I just do it for kicks and giggles. So, all right. So, um, white loop, white, white cable just gets looped. And then your black guy goes on through there and straight down. Boom. There we go. Green guy. Um, goes in, and I like to just go ahead and cross them because why not? In and around, right? White guy's gonna get pulled in, green guy's gonna get pulled in. So, black guy, black guy's already been looped around the white, but he hadn't looped around the green, so he comes back around just like that. So, now he's around the green, green's around 
both black and the white and the white is yeah around both the black and the green so that is a half decent strain relief knot in fact we can push these guys in further just to tighten them up good you don't want to tighten them too much because guess what the, if you bend them or if you're kinked them or if you're any of the above your that's not a good thing. Okay, so at this point, I just happen to know, just flat out eyeballing it, that that's a that's a that's a lot of extra stuff because your thing's gonna go on top of here, and then you're gonna have all of that, and then you still need the bottom part to come up and climp on the crimp on the uh, sheath. So where'd my dikes go? There we go. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of room. This is the world's ugliest knot, by the way. All right, so, um, jeez, that guy really wanted to stay on. That guy gets pulled. Come on, you're in the 12 gauge, there we go. Ooh, that's a, that's a little, well, for demonstration purposes, that'll work. But so, all right, so we have our guys, we have our knot, and then we have the rest of the cable. So do that. So we will let gravity help us. Thing goes around, stick it on the correct side. And then we, oop, not that guy, this guy. Now, it's important to realize that before this was the brass screw this was the silver screw but because this is the female end rather than the male end they're swapped so yeah so every time you do this you got to look to make sure which screw is which and then so that goes on that guy that frayed a little bit but that's okay like your the the key pieces to get out of this is the uh um, the fact the knot is supposed to knot itself and the wires go on the correct spot. All right. You know, anytime I have a, I have a job that I think this has the potential to involve swearing, I usually grab a helmet or not a helmet, a uh, hammer, although I, to be honest, I, wearing a helmet probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me sometimes um a hammer because i mutter and then my first thought is uh have you tried the hammer and uh usually that's all right so we're ooh, ooh, ooh. all right let me show you this real quick um ooh, you can't really see it there's all right so there there's a couple of strands that got pushed back and they got pushed towards the back end. So essentially what's gonna end up happening is all the wires are gonna get covered with the exception of those sticking back. In fact, no, you can't see it. Just too fine. But anyway, but that that's a source of electricity. So if you cut this guy too long and you get that guy, you know, a couple of those guys pushing back, you can get a short in here, which can cause, cause a fire. So, well, while you're doing this, you gotta either look for that and to push it right where it's supposed to be. Yeah, you just like to split, don't you? Well, we'll, anyway. Um, or when you get done, check your thing and then cut off any ones that are out there. But yeah, it's, I don't know. I kind of figure it's easier to do it right the first time and uh, go back. It's certainly easier to do this right than it is to put out a fire and or explain to your boss why it burnt the building down. Um, okay, so the knots, this might not have room because the, they're not really made for stress relief knots. Who knows? Okay, I'm just kind of clamp that together. And there we go, line her up a little bit better. Let's see what happens. Nice 
start to does it catch? Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. That's catching. This guy is catching. This guy is. There we go. Yep. Okay. That's ain't good. There we go. All right. Like I said, you don't want to strip these. And that's that. So we got a cable. We have our... That's that. That's that. I don't want to pinch it too much, but you do want it to. There we go. She's good. In fact, let's. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Both are on. That's a good sign. Cool. All right. Hope this was helpful. Um, thanks.